I thought that was gonna go better. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another video. No card tricks today. I thought we'd just do Harry Potter tricks instead. I thought that would be more fun. So this is Saturday, which means it's What's the Trick, where we talk about common interview questions for the software world. So today we're talking about debouncers and throttlers. And let me just real quickly explain what a debouncer is. So let's say you have a page and you're scrolling down and something is happening on that scroll. So that could be like 30 events per second happening. You don't want that. That's bad information overload, huge slowdowns most likely. So you need a way to limit the amount of events that can happen in a certain amount of time. That's called a debouncer. So you have a leading edge and a trailing edge before like the reset. So let me, let me explain. So you're scrolling down, you're having something going off like 30 seconds or 30 times a second and the debouncer creates a delay. So you want, you know, it can only happen here. And then again, in three seconds, it can happen here. So if you just have an infinite number of events happening constantly, you need a way to put gaps in that because that's just too much information. And the throttler is kind of like, kind of like the reverse of that. So let's say you have a button, you press the button and it pops up and it says, hello. And it doesn't matter how many times you press that button, it will only work every like two seconds or however long you set it to. So that's a throttler and the debouncer creates the gap. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So you might not be able to actually like code it. It's actually kind of a kind of comp complicated code. It took me a while to figure out uh, what it is. So I'll do my best to explain it to you. But depending on the position, you might be able to pseudocode your way through it or talk about how the different kind of checks you would need to do within these functions. Or you might actually have to write it from start to finish. I guess it just depends on the job position or how well you can interview and explain yourself. Before we jump in, I just want to say thank you to the patrons that support this channel. We have Laszlo, the Martin Fee, Aubrey, Josh, Craig. I appreciate all you guys and uh, thanks so much for supporting the channel. If you've ever considered to donating to someone's cause, you know, if I've helped you out, maybe the next time you do, consider me. I'd appreciate that. The link for that is in the description below. If you like these videos, hit that little subscribe button and the bell next to it. I have a Discord. The link for that is in the description below. If you want to engage with me, that's where I'm at pretty much all day long. Or you can leave a comment or shoot me an email. I just like engaging with you guys. So, um, new video every single day. And uh, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. All right, so what you're looking at here is just a simple HTML page I made. It's got a couple buttons on it, and I uh, have two JavaScript files, one for the debounce and one for the throttle. And so let's go ahead and look at the debounce first. We can see that right now I have a setting checking for a mouse wheel. So it's going to check to see, oops, it's going to check to see if I scroll my mouse wheel, and then it's going to print no, no debounce here um, in, in the console. So if I open up this and I open up the console, clear that error and I start scrolling you can see unlimited actions I can just scroll my wheel on the mouse as fast as possible and you get unlimited action so we want to stop that that's what the debounce is for like when people are scrolling down Twitter this was a problem um, because of, the, of infinite reload and all that stuff it was constantly checking and that was just horrible for optimization so let's come back to here we're gonna look at my debounce file here and we're gonna change it to delay which is what I have the function for the debounce set to so I'm going to come over here, set that to delay, save it. And so debounce sets a timer from when the last action was, I guess, called, you could say. So now I open up this, clear this console, and I scroll my mouse wheel once. It's going to be one second from the time that action stops. Again, one second. I can keep scrolling and keep scrolling and keep scrolling back and forth and never let the action stop. Nothing will happen. It has to, it has to end. And then one second. And then one second. Okay, so you guys get that. And then here, same for the button. I have no debounce. I can click it as fast as I want. If I come over here to the HTML, and then I come down here to button one, which is the debounce, and I change that to be delay. Save that. Clear the console again. It's going to be one second from when I hit the button that it says hello. One second. So I can keep clicking it over and over and over, but it's not going to do anything because the action hasn't had one second between, I guess, between clicks, you could say. So then I stop, one second. So this is what this is how a debounce works. Let me show you what it is for throttle. So throttle is I can click as fast as I want. Then I come over here to the code, and I change this to be, I think I named the throttle function max limit. Come over here. Save that, 
Clear the console again. So I can click as fast as I want, but only uh, it's only going to appear at the interval that I set. So I'm clicking way faster than one time a second. But it has a, has a max throttle of what it's going to do according to what I set. And I can show you that here. So the debounce, I have it set to be one second from the end of the last action. And then over here at the throttle, I have it set to be two seconds. Like this is as fast as this will print, two seconds. So that is how it works uh, in like, I guess, a real application. Let's actually look at the code. The code is confusing. Don't get stuck on this too much. It has some recursion and all that stuff. If you Google a debounce function in JavaScript, you'll find this. Um, but I have, I have all the comments here. Let me just try and explain it. So you have a debounce function. It takes a function, right? And it has a wait parameter and an immediate parameter. It has a timeout variable. We return, let's see, um, how do I want to explain this? It's, it's checking to see when the last action was clicked. And if it's been a second, it won't let you click it. So you can look through this code here and, and understand it. I'll put, this, I'll put this on my GitHub and you can test it for yourself and try to understand it. But this is fairly straightforward code, except for the little bit of recursion here which I don't think that you should get hung up on. If anything, you should look at this, you should look at this apply here. So function dot apply, and it takes the context and the arguments. And so there's two sections. There's a section that checks to make sure that it has been a second. And then there's a section that makes, that checks to make sure that if it has been a second, clear the timer and, and start it over again. So that's kind of the, the breakdown of these two. Again, I'll put this on my GitHub and I'll link it in the description below. And you can go and you can copy and paste this and you can play with these functions and my, my settings. But again, when you're in the interview, you should be able to explain how this works. Maybe not exactly the syntax. If you can pseudocode this, right, with these comments, if you can understand how these comments are calling this code, I think that's better than nothing. And then it's pretty similar for throttle, except you're just setting, uh, you're just checking the time and you're subtracting the time between the two. So you can say, you know, if the time that you ran it minus the last time it was ran is greater than the, the time limit, then you, you can't do it. And so that's basically how the throttle function works. I, I think that's fairly straightforward enough. It's pretty much all right here. So the time that you ran it right now, the, the last time you clicked minus the last time it was ran is greater than the limit that you pass into it, which is here, two sec 2,000 milliseconds, which is two seconds, then it won't let you do it. And so that's kind of how this works. I guess Maybe there wasn't like a whole lot of critical thinking. I was just showing you some applications of a really common interview questions that you might not even know what a debounce is or how it works or why you would use it. And so that's the purpose of this video. And so I hope this has helped you out. Uh, you can go through this code again and just look at it and try to make sense of it. I feel like I'm just gonna confuse people if I try to explain this. So I'm gonna leave it at this. But I hope this video was helpful. If you think it was, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I would appreciate that. And uh, I'll see you guys later in the live stream.